Mount Huiyi is famous for its beautiful natural scenery. It is also well known because of its association with a 12th century philosopher, Zhu Xi, the father of New Confucianism. On one of his rare trips away from Mount Huiyi, Zhu Xi took part in the famous Goose Lake debate. What two schools of thought clashed in this historic exchange of views? Find out in Zhu Xi and Mount Huiyi, the second part of Great Masters of the Past. Mount Wuyi rises above the southern suburbs of Wuyi Shan in Fujian province. Since time immemorial, it has been famous for its magnificent peaks, lush gullies, and rich natural resources, as well as for its cultural traditions. There doesn't seem to be anything particularly exciting about this side street. It looks no different from side streets in many other parts of China. The residents lead an apparently peaceful and happy life. At noon, the cobblestones shimmer in the sunshine. Down the street, there stands an abandoned house. With its broken walls and windows, it's hard to imagine that once this house was very famous. Eight hundred years ago, this was a place of pilgrimage for scholars. Here, one of the most influential philosophers in Chinese history ran a school. The street is in the town of Wufu at the foot of Mount Wuyi. It's called Zhuzi Alley. Zhuzi, or Master Zhu, was the title of the great philosopher Zhu Xi. He was born in Yoshi, Fujian province in the year 1130, and he died in the year 1200. Zhu Xi was just 14 years old when his father passed away. He and his mother went to live in Wufu. Every day to get to school, Zhu Xi walked down the narrow streets that would later be known as Zhu Zhe Alley. The residents of Wufu are very proud of their connection to Zhu Xi. They take great pains to preserve the narrow street as he would have known it. Zhu Xi is a Nan Song Shi, we call a philosopher, or a more 
就是他独特提出的理道理的理理学家。朱熹呢，在十四岁的时候，父亲过世，父亲把他托付给自己的挚友，所以呢，在十四岁这一年，他跟他的母亲一块呢来到武夷山下，就是我们今天所说这个里边的武夫，就是在武夫里今天的啊这个原来的淳安。今天的武夷山市，在这个地方，朱熹得到了父亲的挚友，也是当时他的三个导师之一，应该说是呃理学早期的传送理学以及相符学派的代表人物，一个是刘子辉，一个是刘勉之，再一个是胡宪。这三个人物呢，都是学问呃非常。高的呃有学成所成的啊这样一些呃名流，在朱熹成长的过程中，给他影响最大的是刘子辉。刘子辉呢教他学易学，然后呢呃儒学，所以朱熹呢应该说在最早的时候就奠定了儒学的根基。20th century scholar Tai Shang Si wrote, Eastern Zhou brought forth Confucius, and Southern Song, Zhu Xi. Chinese culture originated on Mount Tai Shan and Wu Yi. December 1999, UNESCO entered Mount Wuyi on the list of World Natural and Cultural Heritage Sites. Explaining its decision, the organization commented that Mount Wuyi provided the setting for the development and spread of Neo-Confucianism. Zhu Xi is widely considered to be China's greatest ever thinker, philosopher, and educator after Confucius. As the founder of the Neo-Confucian School, he was a key figure in the latter development of Confucianism. Its association with Zhu Xi has drawn worldwide attention to Mount Wuyi. Zhu Xi's influence extends throughout East Asia. And to Europe and North America, scholars of his philosophy are found in every corner of the world. On Mount Wuyi, Zhu Xi laid the theoretical foundations for a school of thought that dominated ideology in China for almost a thousand years, from the Song to the Qing Dynasty. Mount Wuyi is famous for its beautiful natural scenery. It is also well known because of its association with the 12th century philosopher Zhu Xi, the father of New Confucianism. On one of his rare trips away from Mount Wuyi, Zhu Xi took part in the famous Goose Lake debate. What two schools of thought clashed in this historic exchange of views? Find out in Zhu Xi and Mount Wuyi, the second part of Great Masters of the Past. In the year 1148, Zhu Xi passed the Imperial Civil Service Examination and was subsequently appointed Sub-Prefectural Registrar of Tongan County in Zhuangzhou Prefecture. On his way to Tongan, he visited Li Tong, a follower of the philosophical tradition established by Chang Yi.
Li Zong was highly impressed by the young official and accepted him as a student. Under Li Tong's influence, Zhu Xi began to develop the ideological principles that would become known as Neo-Confucianism. At the foot of Mount Wuyi stands a building, Ziyang Tower. The tower is surrounded by green hills and a clear stream runs past it. Behind it are a pond and a kitchen garden. Zhu Xi lived here for several years studying philosophy. One day, he imagined he saw a reflection in the pond of a thin man and clouds. As he turned his head, he saw a spring behind the house. This vision inspired him to compose a poem which reads, The small pond resembles a mirror, sunlight and clouds linger on it. How is the spring so clear? Because it takes its water from the source. Ziyang Tower and its surroundings are indeed exquisite. But the most impressive feature of the location is its cultural atmosphere. The inscription is in the handwriting of Zhu Xi. It reads, Learning is the principle for family prosperity. Harmony is the principle for regulating the family. Proper conduct is the principle for protecting the family. And hard work and thrift are the principles for running the household. of the Jiaochu River in Wuchu. He often took his students there. Living in this secluded spot, Zhu Xi was content. But he had no desire to be a pastoral poet or a hermit. He aspired to become a master of learning and a sage who would inspire people to lead decent lives. In the year 1183, when he was 54 years old, Zhu Xi resigned from his official post. He settled in Wuchu at the foot of Yingping Peak on Mount Wuyi. There, he and his students built a house, and the house became their school. That school was known as Wuyi Academy. There, Zhu Xi wrote books and gave lectures. Famous scholars came from across southeast China to learn from Zhu Xi. China's first private university. The new philosophy established by Zhu Xi embraced the thinking of the Confucian scholars Zhou Duanyi, Zhang Yi, and Zhang Hao, combined with ideas found in Buddhism and Taoism. At its core is the Li, or rational principle. In explaining the concept of Li, Zhu Xi ascribed to it three key features, as the metaphysical element of natural and social phenomena, as the law of things, 
and as the basis of ethical behavior.应该来说跟我们今天所讲的和后天之性受到环境的影响所以才会有说要灭人欲 is famous for its beautiful natural scenery It is also well known because of its association with the 12th century philosopher Zhu Xi the father of New Confucianism, on one of his rare trips away from Mount Wu Yi, Zhu Xi took part in the famous Goose Lake debate. What two schools of thought clashed in this historic exchange of views? Find out in Zhu Xi and Mount Wu Yi, the second part of Great Masters of the Past. An inscription in A Chu Tower on Mount Wu Yi reads, Bright Moon in the Middle of the Sky. This is a quotation from the Buddhist monk Ko Bien, who claimed to have achieved enlightenment while gazing at the moon. Tianqin, or Middle of the Sky Temple, got its name from the monk's remark. A stone tablet inside Shen Qian Tower on Mount Wui bears another inscription. This one describes Zhu Xi's pursuit of the goal of integrating Buddhism and Taoism. The two characters carved on the rock at Water Curtain Cave mean living source. They come from a poem by Zhu Xi called Thoughts About Book Reading. Zhu Xi read widely and his knowledge of Buddhism and Taoism, as well as of Confucianism, was the basis on which he developed Neo-Confucianism. Zhu Xi left Fujian province on only 14 occasions. One of those trips was to attend the historic Goose Lake Debate. At the time of the Goose Lake debate, Lu Jiuyuan's philosophy of subjective idealism had been spreading from west to east. Zhu Xi, working in the east of the country, had just formulated the outline of his Neo-Confucianism. Inevitably, his thinking and that of Lu Jiuyuan collided. In 1175, the Confucian scholar Lu Zuqian invited Zhu Xi and Lu Jiuyuan to meet at Goose Lake. There, they would debate subjective idealism versus objective idealism. Uh, 
初学的学说呢，我们今天来看有很简单的两个呃入门的词汇，一个是理，一个是气。那理呢，它的说法就是，我们作为哲学来说，它解释的问题就是世界之所以存在，世界之所以发生演变的根本原因。那朱熹的解释就是说，在所有的物质之前。这个物质怎么来的？我要找到这个根源，他认为这个根源就是理。那理的具象化就是我们说的气，所以他认为理在先。那这个理，我们是说啊、呃，这个很抽象，是吧？说的太清楚，所以我们认为朱熹的学说呢是较为新的。可是呢，他认为理是在先，已经就存在，所以我们讲它有一个客观物在前。这个呢，我们叫它客观唯心。那陆九渊他不是，陆九渊呢，他认为是说啊，我们的性人在更浅，更浅啊，所以呢，他跟朱熹是一个一个对应，他也唯心，但他唯心呢是说人的心来左右这些的运转，所以我们说他是主观的，是由我来影响这些的，叫主观唯心。那这二者呢，当然因为他的。呃，解释方法不同。我们现在呢，没有一一个所谓学说能够说把整个世界解释清楚，更别提在南宋的时候。所以他们一直在那个地方各说各的，各说各的，最后呢是不欢而散。但是不管怎么说，作为啊一次哲学的思辨也好，啊一次哲学思想的碰撞也罢，为后来中国哲学的发展啊做了一次很有益的探讨。Although he urged people to maintain exalted principles and eradicate human desires, Zhu Xi was not an ascetic. He loved nature and had a strong appreciation of beauty. In a poem, Zhu Xi wrote, "Yu Nu Peak by the Arqiu River resembles a slender girl. For whom does she groom herself? Travelers do not stop to engage in vain dreams." There are many mountains ahead of you. Zhu Xi became friendly with a man named Xin Qiji, who served for a time as magistrate of Mount Wuyi. Xin Qiji often traveled between his hometown in Tianjin in Jiangxi Province and Chongan. He would stop on the way and visit Zhu Xi, so the two could discuss politics and write poetry. Xin Qiji remembered one visit in particular when he and Zhu Xi took a boat out on the Jiaochu River. Zhu Xi was one of the most prolific Confucian writers in the history of China. His most important works are Notes on the Four Books, Collected Works of Master Zhu, Classified Conversations of Master Zhu, and Etiquette Said by Zhu Xi for His Family. In his own lifetime, Zhu Xi failed. To make much of an impact with his Neo-Confucian philosophy, and as an imperial official, his honesty 
led him to make many enemies. In the year 1198, Antwor, the Prime Minister, banned the propagation of Neo-Confucianism. Zhuqi was accused of several crimes and dismissed from office. He died in the year 1200 at the age of 73. Although in his lifetime Zhuqi failed as an imperial official, he left a lasting and powerful philosophical legacy. In 2,000 years, a remarkable water control project has played a vital role in keeping the Chengdu Plain irrigated. It's called the Dujiang Weir. The man believed to be responsible for this miracle of engineering was Li Bing. But what was the connection between his great project and the philosophy of the father of Taoism, Lao Tzu? Find out in Li Bing and the Dujiang Weir, the third part of the series Great Masters of the Past. Thank you.